You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Thousands of nursing students are graduating this spring, and although nothing can prepare them for entering the workforce during a pandemic, many are rising to the challenge. MTN's Andy Curtis has more on those who are stepping up to work on the front lines. This year's nursing school graduates will be entering the workforce in one of the most difficult periods the profession has seen in recent times. I don't think there's a time that could prepare us for it because I mean, no one's really been prepared for it. Julia Wilbur just graduated from Carroll College. She's taken a job at a Washington DC hospital. DC has become an emerging epicenter for COVID-19 with continual growth in daily cases and deaths. It can be difficult and worrisome to think about at times, but at the same time, like I've spent the last three years, three to four years, like gathering all these skills to be able to help. So I would rather use my skills to be a helpful person instead of being letting fear kind of hold me back. Patients and their families depend on nurses to be pillars of strength and guidance during difficult times. But it can be very difficult to prepare a student to be ready to take on that kind of load. But ultimately, nurses just want to help those in need. Nursing is more than just a job. It is a calling. Maria Bronson is an associate nursing professor at Carroll College. Educators work to give future nurses not just the knowledge needed to care and treat patients, but also to take care of themselves. I think it's a very stressful time. And one thing that we try to do with our graduates is to help them build the skills and techniques to maintain good self. Bronson says they discuss the importance of regular sleep, a healthy diet, self-reflection, and faith. Skills that have become increasingly important with nurses and nursing students across all experience levels. Like Helena College junior Ashley Levine, who is working as a nursing assistant during the pandemic. Levine says the whole experience has made her a better nurse and not once thought about throwing in the towel. When you work in healthcare, the job never really ends. I don't have any, you know, underlining conditions that would stop me from working. So I was like, if they need the help, I'm, I'm ready to help. Andy Curtis and John Riley for MTN. Well, late this afternoon, Bighorn County confirmed its fourth case of COVID-19. This new case, a woman in her 20s. Health authorities have begun tracing the contacts of this new case. As with previous cases, all close contacts will be notified, interviewed, and given instructions for further action if required. Due to limited testing supplies in Bighorn County, people who are not named as a close contact and are not sick should not seek testing. Well, this case actually leaves the state total at 459 in the active cases at 20. That's because the Jefferson County Health Department says a new active case reported over the weekend is a man who has not been in Montana for several weeks and did not acquire coronavirus here. In Wyoming, six new confirmed cases today, bringing the state's total to 510, but so far 451 people have now recovered. Montana will ramp up testing and tracing this week. Governor Steve Bullock announced today the state has received an additional 19,500 swabs and other supplies to test Montanans with COVID symptoms. In a news release, Bullock says it's critical to have access to supplies to identify new cases and ambitiously contact trace to remove chains of transmission and contain the virus. Bullock would like to get to 2,000 tests a day and prioritize testing in nursing homes, tribal communities, and continue testing people with symptoms. There were 865 tests completed in the last 24-hour reporting period. And some good news tonight related to the COVID-19 crisis in Montana. Insurance companies doing business in the state have handed out rebates or rate reductions totaling some $20.7 million this year because of the reduced number of claims. State Insurance Commissioner Matt Rosendale's office released those numbers today. Most of that money is on auto insurance policies because Montanans have been driving far less during the crisis and filing fewer accident claims. Rosendale says his office has expedited regulatory procedures to ensure the money gets back in the hands of Montanans as quickly as possible. His office estimates that insurers are giving money back on nearly 500,000 policies. The companies returning the most money include State Farm at nearly $8 million on auto policies and GEICO. 
at $3.7 million. About two dozen companies have returned money on their policies here in Montana, according to the Insurance Commission. Well, if you ventured out this weekend, you know the way we wine and dine is a lot different now. Q2's Mitch Leggy touched base with local favorites to see how they fared. Some Billings restaurants are getting back into the swing of being open after almost two months of being closed. It's uh, been a little up and down, but it's been some good nights and some slower ones. We're uh, doing, still doing a lot of to-go orders. Pasteca at the Granary has kept up with its new to-go service while it let customers into the dining room last week. Preparing food for both services at the same time has been a challenge. It uh, gets a little hectic in the kitchen at times because it seems in Billings everywhere's between you know six and seven is where everybody wants to eat. So everything kind of hits at once. So it tends some little bit slow at times. Depends on how we get hit and what items they do pick from our do, a limited menu that we do have out. The usual 300-person capacity at Basteca has been reduced by half by removing tables, and menus have been changed to be disposable, among other sanitation procedures. Similar health practices are being followed at CJ's Bar and Grill. Ownership there said the regulars all stopped by last week and were understanding about not being able to have a seat at the bar. Everyone coming in here, the whole you know city has been more in understanding with what's going on. You know we're not alone. They understand that they want to come out here and they want to come to a safe environment, and they, they trust that we're providing a safe environment. Truly, I think we have been. Burton said the casino at CJ's has been a little more tough to keep sanitized, with gamblers often wanting to switch machines when they're not winning. But he said his staff is keeping up with it, and signs are available to temporarily close machines if they need to be sanitized. That's kind of hard to police, but you know the casino staff's done a great job of managing that situation and uh, kind of going forward with it. Staff at both restaurants said business was big in-house and for takeout on Mother's Day over the weekend. Friday night was a good night, Saturday was, was decent, and then last night would be in Mother's Day. We had a lot of to-goes, but we also had a lot of people come in and sit down and enjoy it with their mothers and their families, so it was good. The restaurant staff thanked the Billings community for its support during the COVID-19 pandemic. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. And Mitch tells us that CJ's was able to keep its kitchen staff employed during the shutdown and hired all the front of house staff back as well. At Besteca, some kitchen staff positions had to be cut, but most of the servers were hired back on. It's also that time of year to celebrate our high school graduates, and that means getting creative with annual grad party events. CC Bentler, chair of the 2020 Billings Senior Rad Grad Celebration, says this year the high school has planned a parade Bentler says they wanted to do something just as big and just as memorable as the rad grads in the past. They raised money for the event by holding what they call the Bronc Derby. The Derby challenged all Billings senior alums to see which class could raise the most cash. In a one week, former senior high uh, alums raised some $20,000. Um, they can be in uh, pickup trucks and um, cars. Uh, pickup trucks are limited to two to three kids um, just for spacing. Um, they have to have a face cover, so we've ordered the kids um, uh, a bronc themed face cover um, that'll be a kind of a piece of memorabilia as well for the, you know, in 30 years they might want to show their grandchildren their kooky graduation party swag. The parade starts at Senior High on Friday, May 22nd at 6 p.m. And Bettler said she is grateful for the community's support and local businesses that have donated to this event. Tonight, we want to tell you about a new effort to help Montanans recover from the financial impacts of COVID-19. The Rebound Montana Relief Fund is a partnership between MTN, AMB West Philanthropies, and the Montana Community Foundation. Now, this isn't the first time the three of us have teamed up to help Montanans in need. Our 2017 Montana Wildlife, Wildfire Relief Fund raised more than $600,000 to help rural volunteer fire departments all thanks to contributions from viewers like you. And this year, in the wake of the devastating impact COVID-19 has had on families and businesses, we're renewing that partnership. We've created a statewide fund to provide security, net funding for rural and tribal communities adversely affected by the pandemic. There will be organizations that cease to exist because they just financially are not able to continue. Um, really what we're talking about here is resiliency and focusing on um, minimizing disruptions as best we can. And if you can contribute, please go to ktvq.com slash relief. There you can access various funds that have been set up. MTN and AMB West Philanthropies will match the first $150,000 donated to the Montana COVID-19 Relief Fund. 
Anything you can afford is a way we can all help our fellow Montanans rebound. Well, a mysterious pediatric illness thought to be tied to the coronavirus is being blamed for the deaths of at least three children now in New York. Hospitals in at least six states are reporting similar cases of what doctors are now calling pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome. CBS News senior medical correspondent Dr. Tara Narula, Narula has more. This it presents as an inflammation of the blood vessels. A warning from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo as the state investigates at least 85 cases of what many are calling pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Officials say it has killed at least three children in New York. In many cases, children did not have respiratory issues, instead experiencing abdominal symptoms, change in skin color or chest pain. What we're seeing is the immune system's actually going into overdrive impacting the, the body in a negative way. Some of these patients are having inflammation of their coronary arteries, and you can have basically a heart attack. Dr. Jake Kleinmahan is a pediatric cardiologist at Oxner Hospital for Children. He has already treated several children for this illness, including 12-year-old Juliet Daly. Her heart was not functioning. Her heart was inflamed um, so badly that the conduction system was not working in her heart, so it was barely pumping. She was in heart failure. Hospitals in at least six states have reported seeing similar cases. The illness is so concerning, New York City issued a health alert about it last week. If we're able to knock down the inflammation and get them past the, the beginning stages of this, they're usually doing very well. Experts say this disease bears some resemblance to a rare condition called Kawasaki disease. And Governor Cuomo says his state's health department will work with the CDC and the New York Genome Center to study the illness. Dr. Taryn Arula, CBS News, New York. And doctors stress that the illness is very rare, but parents should call their child's doctor if they notice prolonged fever, abdominal symptoms, change in color of the skin and lips, or chest pain. Still to come on tonight's 9 o'clock news, Yellowstone National Park buses are a huge part of what drives its tourism industry. The things could come to a complete stop. We're going to go behind the gates for details. But first, Bob McGuire's in with your full seven-day forecast.